Let's solve a physics exam question from India. We have a gravity square with four masses m that are equal, that are positioned at each of those vertices of the square of side a. Now if they're performing circular motion about the center only under the influence of their own gravity, what speed will they be moving at? You have the options here, but please bear in mind that no calculator is allowed. As always with these problems, we should start off with the fundamentals. So I'm going to pick this point here. What forces are acting on it? There will be a gravitational force which will be along this line and then there will also be a gravitational force which will be along the diagonal of the square. There will also be a gravitational force which will be acting along this line. So all of those forces have to combine to produce a net force towards the center of rotation that we tend to call the centripetal force. So we can write that the net force will be given by the mass of this times the centripetal acceleration, which is going to be v squared divided by the radius. Now talking about the radius, well, this is going to be kind of this, but let's express this in terms of a. I've not quite drawn these to scale, but this here should be a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And if this side here is a, well, then that will make from here to here a over root 2, and this side here will also be a over root 2. So rather than r, I'm just going to write a divided by root 2, like so. And now let's find the net force. Okay, so let's consider the force along this side here. This will be equal by g m times m, which is going to give me m squared. Divide that by the distance between them, which is just a squared. Now, look at something really cool. The vertical component of the force along here and the vertical component of the force along here will cancel out. So I'm only interested in the component which is going to be acting towards the center. So if I call this angle here theta, then this here will be multiplied by cos theta. The horizontal component of the force from here to here will also be exactly the same. So I'm going to need two of those horizontal components like so. After that, I'm going to be adding the force between m and this far away m here plus gm times m, divide that by the distance from here to here. Well, this thing will just be equal to a over root 2 plus a over root 2, which is 2 root 2 over 2, which is just root 2a. Let's not forget to square this. And this thing here will be equal to mv squared root 2 divided by a. Let's simplify even further. So what are we going to get? 2gm squared over a squared. Now this cosine term, cosine is just adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is just a over root 2. We're going to divide this by the hypotenuse, which is just uh, a. Uh, of course, these ones here will just cancel out plus gm squared over 2a squared, which will be equal to mv squared root 2 divided by a. And now we can cancel out some of those m's and a's. So let's get rid of these. Uh, additionally, we can cancel out this a here as well. And what we're left with on the left hand side will just be 2gm over a. What are we left here? 1 over root 2, so just a factor of root 2. Shall we just tidy this up a little bit? 2 over root 2 will just give me, well, root 2 at the top, like so, plus gm over. 2a and this here will just be equal to v squared root 2. Now let's also get rid of this factor of root 2 by doing this. Okay, we're starting to get there. I'm going to factor out gm over a. What I'm going to be left with is just going to be 1 
plus 1 over 2 root 2, which is going to be equal to v squared. And we can see why this question is very tricky under time pressure, because we're going to need to approximate this really quickly to choose one of the answers here. OK, so root 2 is around 1.4. Four. So this means that 2 times 1.4, what would that give me? 2.8, like so. Probably the easiest way to approximate this is to call this 3, which is going to give me 0 0.33. So it's just going to be a little bit uh, over that. So somewhere around 0 0.34, 0 0.35. I think the real answer is actually 0 0.35. So we can just leave it at that, which is going to be uh, v squared. So v will be the square root of gm over a times by the square root of 1.35. So without a calculator, we know know that this thing is going to be smaller than 1.35 so this means that this can't be the answer uh, it also means that this here it can't be the answer now we only have two possibilities left so 1.2 times 1.2 is going to give me 1.44 which is way bigger than this or well, a little bit bigger than this meaning that the correct answer has to be b I hope. But in order to really understand gravity, you should be versed in calculus. And this is precisely why you should have a look at this video from the J.E. Advanced.